Now we are going to further out of dating chapter 5. In this video, we are going to learn about different types of energy and conservation of that energy. Thus, the learning outcome for subtopic 5.2 are First, you need to know how to state the principle of conservation of energy. Second, you need to know how to apply the principle of conservation of energy. And lastly, you have to be able to state and apply the work energy theorem. Energy. I'm pretty sure that we have heard that term before. But how do we define it? In terms of physics, energy is the system's ability to do work. If you might know this, we are using the word system ability. This energy system is defined as all components that are related to the production, conversion, delivery and use of energy in a system. But in general, we just need to relate energy with the ability to do work. Energy is a scalar quantity, means it does not have direction. The unit for energy is joule and we denote it as a capital letter J. Energy can be presented in various forms, but in this video, we are going to talk about potential energy, kinetic energy, and mechanical energy. Potential energy. An object can store energy by altering the position from its equilibrium position. For example, a drawn bow is able to store energy as the result of its position are being changed. This is what we define as potential energy. There are two types of potential energy, which are gravitational potential energy and elastic potential energy. Gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy is the energy stored in an object as the result of its vertical position or height. The energy is stored as the result of the gravitational attraction of the earth or the object. The gravitational potential of an apple hanging on a tree is dependent on two variables, the mass of the apple and the height to which it is hanged. Thus, giving the formula of gravitational potential energy of U equal to mgh. Potential energy is denoted as capital U, where m is the mass of the object, g is the gravitational acceleration, and h is the height of the object. Note that the gravitational potential energy depends only on the height of the object above the surface of the Earth. Elastic Potential Energy Elastic Potential Energy is the energy stored in elastic material as the result of their stretching or compression. The amount of elastic potential energy stored in such device is related to the amount of stretch of the device. The more stretch, the more stored energy. Thus, giving out a formula of U S equal to half A X squared. Note that we are using U S to describe elastic potential energy where K is the spring constant and X is the elongation. From the figure, we can see that elastic potential energy are gained from both stretching and compression. Kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is the energy of a body due to its motion. Any object that has motion, whether it is vertical or horizontal, has kinetic energy. Therefore, kinetic energy can be calculated by using formula of K equal to half mv squared, where we use capital K for kinetic energy, while m is the mass and v is the velocity. Since it is a type of energy, Therefore, it is, a, it is a scalar quantity and have the unit of joule. The law of conservation of energy says that energy can neither be created or destroyed, while its principles state that in an isolated system or closed system, the total energy of that system is constant. Or, by equation, this can be written as total initial energy equal to total final energy. Now, let's look at figure shown. As we can see here, when the girl are holding up a ball, the ball will have gravitational potential energy in it. Since the ball is initially not moving, it does not have kinetic energy. But right after the ball is released from the high ground, the 
potential energy is converted to kinetic energy thus giving downward motion to the ball. From this example, we should be able to relate that kinetic energy was not created, neither the potential energy was destroyed. Instead, the energy was converted into another form. The relationship between these two energy are what we call as mechanical energy. Conservation of mechanical energy In an isolated system, the mechanical energy of a system is the sum of its potential energy U and the kinetic energy K of the object. Moreover, this mechanical energy are constant because it must obey the principle of conservation of energy. Now, Let's look at this simulation. There is a skateboarder that skates up and down on a U-shaped track. If we refer to the graph on the left side, we can see that the energy changes between potential and kinetic energy only. Therefore, by relating to the principle of the conservation of mechanical energy, the skateboarder will skate up and down forever. But this does not happen in real life. The skateboarder will stop eventually. This is because some of the energy is converted into other forms such as heat or sound which is due to friction. On the right side of the simulation, as we increase the friction, we can see that the skateboarder slows down because the energy is changed to the thermal energy. After all energy is converted to thermal energy, the skateboarder will stop. The system loses energy to its surrounding because it may have a counter resistance such as surface friction or air resistance. In this figure, it shows two different situations of an isolated or closed system represented by the circle. The first system has a rock thrown on a spring causing the rock to bounce back up and resulting to less energy loss to the surrounding. While the rock on the second system is thrown on the ground resulting to a lot of energy loss to the surrounding. The energy which is dissipated through the surrounding may be in form of heat, sound or deformation. Work Kinetic Theorem The work energy theorem is defined as the work done by the net force on a body equal to the change in the body's kinetic energy. In this part, we will see how does work is related to kinetic energy. Let's have an example of a box being pushed. As we can see in the figure, initially the box does not move. When the force is applied to move the box over a distant S, the work has been done. As we have learned before, the work done is equal to F dot S. If we substitute F and A, we can derive a formula relating work with kinetic energy. The derivation are shown here. As you can see, the final derivation will have work done equal to final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy or we can denote this as delta thus giving out the formula of W equal to delta K. This relationship is what we call as work kinetic energy theorem. Alright, we are now entering the final subtopic which is power. For this subtopic, we will learn the difference between average power and instantaneous power. Before that, let us get to know what is power. Power is defined as time rate of doing work. The term rate here means that something is being changed over time. For this case, the work done or the energy are changed over time and giving a value of power. Where P is the average power, Delta W is the work done and delta T is time interval. Power is also a scalar quantity and have a unit of joule per second or watt. We denote it as a capital letter W. Here are two examples of daily activity relating to power. Since power is inversely proportional to time taken, so if you are playing tennis and you want to get a powerful serve, you just need to reduce the contact time between the racket and the ball. Same concept also apply if you want to get a powerful kick when playing football. We can prove this concept by using calculation. Here, we have two identical cars but moving at different speed. 
the blue car moved with higher speed of 5 meter per second and took 2 seconds to reach the end of the track while the grey car moved with slower speed of 2 meter per second and took 8 seconds to reach the end of the track when we plug in this information into the formula of power we will get that the blue car has a power of 6250 watt while the grey car has a power of 250 watt this is an example on how to find the average power instantaneous power instantaneous power is defined as the instantaneous rate of doing work in other words it is the value of power that we can calculate at a certain time instantaneous power is given by a formula of v equal to f dot v where v is the velocity we can derive this formula by substituting velocity v equal to s over t into the formula of power for example we have an accelerating car moving along a straight road if we could capture the car and know the velocity at three different points a b and c as shown here we would be able to find the instantaneous power at those points by plugging in all the value into the formula of instantaneous power we will get the value of power are different and higher as it moves from point A to point C. This is because the car was accelerating, thus the velocity was keep on increasing. This concludes all the content that you need to know in chapter 5. Thank you all for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.